Hi guys, and thank you for tuning in. This is an ECG of the 42-year-old patient with abdominal pain. And this is the ECG of the same patient, but taken with a proper skin preparation, patient positioning, and electrodes placement. Can you see the difference? So yeah, if you strongly believe that performing a 12-fit ECG is something more than just whacking the electrodes all across the patient's chest, this video is for you. Here comes 10 top tips for proper ECG acquisition. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. According to The Lancet, there are over 300 million ECGs performed around the world every year. It means that since you started to watch this video, approximately 570 ECGs has been already performed around the world. And that's really cool, but Dr. Faraman and Dr. Rosen in two independent studies suggest that 5% of all ECGs are misinterpreted due to the technical errors made by healthcare providers. To put that into perspective, every single minute 26 patients don't receive the treatment they should have received or receive the wrong treatment only because we are too lazy or don't really know how to do our job properly. How bad is that? Let's do better, shall we? We tend to ask our patients to lay flat to an ECG, whilst actually majority of people will feel uncomfortable in this position. It, it will cause some uh, muscle tremors or uh, movements that will impair the quality of an ECG. Also, if you think about physics of an ECG, the best position would be sitting up. However, again, not all of our patients can do it. So, perfect position would be semi-recumbent, 45 degrees angle. Again, if your patient is not able to do it, fine. Just make a note on an ECG in which position it has been taken. Supine, recumbent, semi-recumbent, uh, or any other. Do you know what this is? This is an artifact caused by the patient's crossed legs. So before you even open the pouch with the dots, make sure that the legs are uncrossed. Speaking of the artifacts, this is what you will see on the screen if your patient has some muscle tremors from a low temperature. So again, before you will start ECG, make sure that your patient is nice and warm. How many of you tend to actually coach your patient's breathing before starting an ECG? If you do, well done for you. If you don't, maybe it's time to consider that because Quite often you may see this, which is not really easy to read, is it? This wandering off baseline is caused by patient who is breathing too quickly or panting. Just give them two seconds, coach their breathing, or just give them oxygen if required. Yes, we still are in amazing world of ECG artifacts, but this time I want to show you this. What do you think? AF? Not really. It is your patient having a mobile phone in their pocket or laying flat on the electrical bed or sitting up in the nice and comfy electric armchair. Before you will start ECG, make sure that there are no electric sources around your patients. I know, I know, I know, patient needs to go to the hospital and a transfer to the definitive care is most important thing. However, do we really need to perform ECG uh, on the truck in motion? This is what you will see if you want to pull over and stop. And this you will see if you will find two minutes to safely pull over, stop and perform ECG as it should be performed. Skin is a really poor conductor of electricity and it can create strong artifacts that are extremely difficult to filter electronically. To avoid them, you need to shave the hair off and remove dry, dead epidermal layers of the skin. But do not wipe the skin with the alcohol wipe because it will dry the skin and may diminish electrical flow. What you can do instead is either rub the skin quite vigorously with the dry gauze to increase capillary blood flow or use the edge of the electrode to remove some dead dry tissue. Next tip, 
attach wire to the electrode prior to applying to the skin and whilst applying to the skin don't press on the center of the electrode press on the edges if you will press on the center of the electrode you will actually spread out this gel here and it may create mini air pockets that will make your uh, ECG almost unreadable I will show you what I mean I'm placing this electrode here and I'm pressing on the center red one I'm placing next to the yellow one but this time I'm pressing on the edges look what happened here gel is spread out here gel is where it should be now let's see from here you can see the small air pockets on the yellow electrode and here everything is as should be consider taping down the lead wire about three inches away from the electrode to prevent it from pulling on the electrode and impairing the conduction limp electrodes should be placed proximal to the wrists and ankles but do not place them on pulse sides because it will make pulse check difficult simple isn't it now the precordial leads v1 and v2 goes in the fourth intercostal space on the both sides of the sternum v4 goes in the fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line and v6 in the same intercostal space just mid auxiliary line now uh, just to fill the gaps with v3 and v5 seems simple doesn't it speaking of v4 v6 electrodes where would you place them in female patients especially those with a massive breast tissue under or over majority of manufacturers advise placing those electrodes beneath the left breast anyway back to the subject if your patient shakes a lot and you cannot control this tremor you may want to move the limb electrodes onto the torso so the proper placement of the limbs electrodes on the torso is called mason lika's placement where the red and yellow leads are placed two centimeters below the clavicles in the infraclavicular fossa medial to the deltoid muscle black electrode should be placed above the ila crest and green should go in the anterior auxiliary line between the last rib and the iliac crest and now the last thing i deliberately left for dessert there's a new optional ecg placement that moves limp electrodes away from wrists but doesn't change the morphology of the ecg please say hello to the new electrode placement also known as nap widely described in british medical journal 2015 by dr gabriel khan look whilst precordial leads are left as normal the arm electrodes are placed on the mid arm on the lateral aspects of the biceps immediately below v4 horizontal line the abdominal electrodes are placed approximately seven centimeters below the umbilical horizontal line and five centimeters on either side of the umbilical vertical line the distance between those two electrodes should be approximately 10 centimeters how cool is that okay 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 I can almost see your faces but Dr Khan proved it on the sample of over 1100 patients so I'm just going to leave this here okay thank you so much for watching uh, by all means leave me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to the channel also if you fancy uh, more reading about the things I presented you will find um, links in the description to this video my name is Alex Hepner and this was group call